Hey guys, it's Drac. First off, we gotta apologize. We haven't been making a lot of videos recently. We're gonna get back to making regular video updates. It's obvious that I'm not dead, so we're not gonna go through the whole long and windy apology, but um, my schoolwork has left me a rambling wreck recently. It's just a ton of schoolwork. Being at university is really, really tough, and doing Nerf and my job on top of that is just a huge drain on my time. But I really wanted to make this video. I've got another one coming up pertaining to some of the people in this video. It is no secret in the nerfing community that Bobololo, Nerfomania, and I are like the very best of friends. And they've truly outdone themselves this time. Bobo got this stuff in from a user who runs a UK nerf forum. And we're going to give him some serious plug in a later video because he sent me some goodies as well but he did not send me one of these and Bobo and Nam each got one and Nam decided that it would be really cool to send me his unbox or unopened so that I could do an unboxing and review video for you guys so without further ado we're going to go into Bobo's mystery box here knowing him there may even be like a can of snakes or something so we're going to be very careful while opening it because Bobo is a wonderful and goofy nerfer and there might be some surprises but I believe this should contain a Snapfire, which I can review and unbox on camera for you guys. Oh, and they left me a note, which is awesome. No snakes, just peanuts. Packing peanuts, that is, not real peanuts. There's a sticky note that says, enjoy from Bobo and Nerfomania. Very cool, guys. Alright, so right off the bat we have two firing modes, which are of course firing for speed or firing for distance. That is controlled down here on the torquey handle bit. And we have speed and power switch, and then I'm not sure what the dial is for to be completely honest with you. Looks like this blaster is really small, I wish I had a Maverick to compare it to just to make sure that like you guys understand how small it is. The design to fire elite darts, it looks like the Draculina is running to grab a Maverick for me to compare it to, which is awesome. Um. Not much more else to say about this. This is clearly the UK version, so the box will look a little bit different in the States, but it's not a big deal. I'm not sure if it comes with Vision Gear because it's advertising that. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. The best way to find out is to go ahead and unbox it. On the back, we are showing that it has eight dart capacity. I assume, since this one is unopened, it will have those elite darts in there. We may even want to test it with some other darts just to see. Obviously this one's unmodded, we've got our instructions, it does not come with vision gear. In the box we have the Snapfire itself, which is surprisingly tiny, um, and the darts. So we're going to go ahead and take it out of the package. She seems to be having a little bit of trouble finding a Maverick, so maybe we can find a different Maverick. Or different blaster. You guys know what most of the sizes on the ones that are out are. So here we have the Snapfire. It's very interesting. I was always curious why this was ridged in the pictures and it's ridged because it's both the priming and the firing sequence and I'm gonna push it from this direction so that you can see that these fold up like fins as we're going through. It looks like we rotate on the pull and then fire. So we have speed down here and then this twist to power. So this isn't a switch. You actually turn the dial to get it there. And if we turn it enough, we are in power mode. And I'm just going to kind of guesstimate how much force it's taking to pull the trigger. Okay. So we have, this is actually very comfortable. There's one issue with the comfort of it that I'm going to mention in a second. But, uh... Profile is super small. We have a Maverick here. Turret is almost exactly the same size. This looks like it's a smidgen larger, but not a whole lot. Uh, classic dart tag layout with the shell over the body. Very, very cool. It's slightly more difficult to pull the trigger with speed and power, but if you're an adult, you're just really not going to be able to notice the difference. I assume that if your hands are much smaller, it will be much easier to tell the difference between speed and power. I feel like for most HVZers who are going to love this blaster because it's a dual wieldable semi-automatic blaster, very similar to why everybody was crazy about the barricade, except this doesn't have to be revved up and can therefore be quieter or easier to use in stealth mode, which is kind of goofy, but a lot of people like the 
the flavor of HVZ more so than being actually competitive. And so dual wielding is really cool. It lets you like be Mala Jovovich from Resident Evil. Although we have yet to have a Nerf shotgun that fires golden dollars, which is kind of cool. I'm digressing. Um, we're going to obviously fire the blaster a little bit. I'm going to see what the ranges on the box are. This is very interesting. I'm having trouble finding the ranges on the box. For the first time, I cannot find advertised ranges on the box. They may be in the instructions. We'll give those a quick check. Maybe Nerf has just decided to stop claiming ranges. Which is good because we make our blasters shoot way farther anyway in the modding community and we're always blowing those out of the water. They always seem a little bit disappointing on the front end. I cannot find rage claims in either feet or meters, depending upon where you are. Very tight barrel fit, which is cool. I think that the barrel fit is mostly consistent, but it's tight in the front and then does get a little bit tighter at the back of the barrel. Very, very cool. Okay, so even with a full turret, like we can hide the snap fire behind a Maverick. It's very, very small. It's even depth wise, it looks like it's only a centimeter deeper than a regular Maverick. Very, very cool blaster. I love how small they made it. I think that's very important to being able to holster two of them, speed draw, and fire. Very, very cool. So we're gonna fire four in power mode and we will see how that goes. Ranges are significant, like very impressive for a blaster this size. It looks like we're getting about 30 to 35 feet flat. Slight angle, maybe. So we fired five in power mode. We're gonna switch it to speed mode. I guess I'll try and fire quickly and see what that does to the ranges. I'm sure it'll have a noticeable impact on modded. And we're definitely like a little shy of what we were at, but it's not a huge difference. Turret free rotates, just notice that. Um, I'd say in speed mode we're shooting about 25, but the barrel fit and plunger must be like really tight because this is phenomenal in terms of its stock ranges. I'm very impressed with it. Part of it has got to be attributed to like the elite darts being really great darts. They're some of the best that we've seen in terms of their consistency and barrel fit and blasters. But this is just a really neat blaster. It's tricky for me to fire it with my offhand, not because the trigger is hard to pull, but because of the way that this trigger works, and this is probably going to be my only complaint because I think that this blaster is sweet, is that we have a ridge underneath the trigger here so that when we're pulling the trigger, it's supposed to like prevent us from getting caught on the, uh, I guess the bottom of the trigger guard. And the issue with that is, is as I'm pulling the trigger, everything's shrinking away. And since it's shrinking away, the trigger pulls downward in an ellipse and the way that that's working I end up like dragging my finger into and through this groove and it's really hard to to show you that on camera because of the way the blaster is built but in our mod guide which will go up here eventually because I do need to give this one back to Nerfomania very soon you'll be able to see very clearly that there's a groove here it's distinct and it's not comfortable this is designed to guard against that but it retracts almost instantly and once it's retracted it's gone and you're dredging your finger through this groove and it's just not comfortable it's definitely going to like lead to to some bruises and possibly like over time even cuts that seems like a serious design flaw and it may have to be fixed when we're modifying these other than that the blaster is great it's just that's really going to have an impact on like long-term all-day playability of this and maybe i'm just crazy but the blaster has a very comfortable handle it's very large, which is good. It, it fits in the hand very nicely. Um, man, that's just driving me nuts. It's such a shame, too, because this blaster is great in every other way. I'm dredging on and rambling, but that's my review of the Nerf Snapfire. I think it's a great blaster, and thank you.